Hey, welcome to Cafe Fibonacci. Oh, I'm Rufus, sorry. Time to start. Okay, get sorry. away from the window. No, it's just the view. It's just <laughs> breathtaking. Today's episode is special to me. Um, today's episode is about power styling. We're going to focus on a couple of InDesign features, nested styles, and apply next, uh, which are, which I consider to be genuinely life changing. Once people get it, once people start using it, um, it really improves their productivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in, in my training, in my training days. Uh, I've seen many people just start crying when, when with you know, joy. I, I hope, yes, not, not because of your with, outfit or the way or that you pain, spoke like to them. Just you know, many people just say, you know, last week I was working on a project and it took me three days to do that. We you know with Nesta styles would have been a lot easier. Yeah, a like, lot easier. Like one click. My experience is that way too many people don't know uh, about nested styles and apply next. It's it's mm. something that. Um, uh, some people just never take the time to investigate. And so we wanted to devote a whole episode uh, just to nested styles, making sure everybody gets it. We show you the nuts and bolts of how this feature works and then show you how much time it can save you in, in real life. So uh, let's get started, shall All right. we? Nested styles. Let's first, I'm just going to start you know, right out of the box showing people why they should be excited about learning how this feature works. Down here at the bottom, in this example here, this text came from a, a, a soccer magazine in Mexico City. And th the bottom chunk of text here, this is how the text looked in the final magazine. This is mm -hmm. how it looks formatted. And any of you who've worked in InDesign for any period of time uh, can see that this could be rather a, a rather tedious little project because you have the, the character level formatting is, is, there's three different kinds within each paragraph, and it's, and it's alternating. There are people. Uh, right now, today, who are going into paragraphs like that using InDesign and manually applying character styles to those runs of text. And, you know, we're here to tell you you don't have to do it that way. There's a way to automate it. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't you enjoy your work a little bit better if you could just select all your text and with one click, with the application of one paragraph style, you could do this? Okay, with one click, yeah. I just formatted all the text in those paragraphs. So nested styles is what enables me to take what would otherwise be uh, a fairly tedious time consuming mm -hmm. proce process and uh, make it pretty much happen instantly. Yep. So that's what we're going to talk to you about uh, today. Okay, what I'm going to do sh here is just show you the basics of how nested styles work. Now, later on, we have a special guest uh, appearing with us today. Anne Marie Concepcion is going to be here, and she's going to. Uh, uh, run with a, an example just like this a little bit further, but I just wanted to get the basics down here. So what we have here is just some raw text for a, a classified ad. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to format this with one click as well. I'm just going to select all of it and uh, click on my nested style. And you'll see that suddenly there's mixed formatting in these paragraphs. What you'll see here is that the text begins with a bold style. This classified ad for a car, the model year and model name are in bold, but then it switches to a Roman mm -hmm. uh, face for the rest of the paragraph. Well, how does this happen? How does InDesign know um, what to make bold and what to make Roman there? Well, let's open up the actual style. Now, the nested styles feature, you'll see it in your paragraph style options and in your uh, regular paragraph options. It's called drop caps and nested styles. And the feature that we're looking at today is right here uh, where it says nested styles. All a nested style is, is a rule. You are defining rules for InDesign so that it knows how to apply character styling within a paragraph. That's all it is. It's, it's that simple. The user interface might look a little bit daunting initially, but it's not really. The reason this text here is bold is I've told it to apply a character style, classified year and make. That's a bold character style, either through or up to, in this case through, the first instance of a dash. The dash is my delimiter character. It tells InDesign when to stop applying this character style. So the reason that this paragraph begins with bold and then switches to Roman is that I've told it, okay, begin the paragraph with this bold style, apply this bold style through the first instance of a dash character. What other choices do we have in that, uh, in that menu there? This pop-down menu has a lot of canned choices, like uh, sentences, words, tab characters, force line break. Force line break is a shift return or soft return. 
These are all uh, canned uh, characters you can use, but you can also enter whatever character you want um, in this field. And uh, later on, Anne-Marie is going to show you a special trick about this field as well. So that's why this text is bold. Now watch what happens down here if I remove this dash character. I delete it. Well, see how the paragraph changed. InDesign is still looking for the first instance of a dash. It's just now it appears down here in this phone number. We will restore this. And one of the interesting things that you'll notice about this feature is that it's dynamic. Once you get your nested style set up correctly, you can just enter text. And as long as you're hitting the right characters, uh, you never have to reach for your style palette mm -hmm. to apply a style. Um, InDesign will automatically switch out the styles for you. So that's what we have here so far. That's all a nested style is. It's a rule that defines where to apply a character style within a paragraph. And that's how that first example I showed you was done, and that's how this one was done. What Anne Marie's going to show you in our interview with her a little bit later is how to also make a price bold. Like suppose our editor changes uh, the format of our, of our uh, classified ads so that the, the pricing needs to be bold as well. Anne Marie's going to show you how to do that. That's something I would normally show, but I'm going to leave that to her uh, this time around. So now let's start looking at what we can do with a, with a nested style. This would be a standard uh, table of contents uh, that we have here. And what I've got is uh, a run of text, which it would be the, the name of the section of the magazine, the name of the article, and then a tab character, and then uh, the author's name or just a page number. I'm going to go to a paragraph style and just apply this paragraph style uh, to that text. And you'll see that with one click, we can do that. Wow. Just that fast. Let's open up this one, too, just so we, just so we know what's going on here. Let's look at the nested style for that, um, that paragraph. What we've got here is we used two nested styles, which was uh, unnecessary, but it, it shows how it works. The all caps here is a uh, character style entitled uh, AC, or named AC for all caps. And that is applied through two tab characters. There's a, a right tab. First, at the beginning of the paragraph, you tab into a right tab. And then you enter your word. And then after the second tab, which is left aligned, then it automatically switches to an, an italic character style. And so that is what uh, styles that text automatically. And then again, because I have these built in already, now I can do this. Now I can go, um, uh, I can add another letters section here. OK, actually page 16. So as you can see, as long as I'm entering the delimiter characters, uh, the styling changes for me automatically. It saves me tons of time from having to go in and manually uh, change the formatting as I uh, move through my text. OK. Very, very, very common example. This is another table of contents. Uh, this shows another um, application of nested styles. I'm just going to select those paragraphs for those table of contents entries and select this uh, nested style. And boom, got three things going on here. I've got the page numbers, which are bold and green, and then a running head here, and which segues into just an italic entry for a description of the article. How did you decide that after the third Brittany, the text changes? I don't see any special character there. Uh, well, that is actually going to be a trick that I'm going to explain a little bit later. Oh, I'm sorry. So you, that's OK. No, it just shows you're thinking. It shows you're not sleeping <laughs> uh, during this recording, and, and that's good. But I'll get to that. It's a very good question, and I'll get to that. But notice, here's what's, um, here's what's going on. I'm using uh, the uh, page number, a page number style, which makes this green mm -hmm. and bold through the first tab character. Then the style for uh, the running head, which goes up to a period, but which this period mysteriously disappears. And then I have another nested style that makes the period disappear. That's my tip that I'm going to show a little bit. And then after that, once it hits, it finishes that last nested style, then what it will do is just revert to the background paragraph style. So let's go to our next example here. Now, one of the things that I uh, like to use, or and, and until uh, InDesign uh, CS2, I use this um, a lot. Um, one of the delimiter characters that you can use for uh, nested styles is the forced line break mm -hmm. or, the, or the shift return. And what that enables me to do is um, gives me the appearance of formatting multiple paragraphs when, in fact, it's just one paragraph. So I'm going to zoom in here so we can look at these a little bit more close up. This is a kind of a common effect for like the credits in a magazine. I'm going to go uh, grab my paragraph style here and hit this one like that. Hmm. 
and again, it's just using a soft return. A shift return here is the uh, delimiter or the, or the place that tells InDesign where to uh, switch the nested style assignment. So it's, this is applying no nested style. It's using the paragraph style for the first line. And then when it hits the forced line break, then it applies a character style, that all caps character style there, uh, to the second line. Can you show the invisible characters for a second? So just we can, we can see how that sure. works. Let's go up here. Uh, well, that's actually, you know, we'll have to uh, just hit W. Okay. All right. So you can see here, there's the, uh, that little symbol there is the indicator, it's the invisible character for uh, indicating a, a soft return or shift return, and that's the regular carriage return there. Now we'll hit our uh, second example, which is a table of contents. This is a little bit more involved, but this is really pretty. Imagine just being able to do that just with one click. That's the beauty of this feature, is taking uh, things like table of contents and um, uh, other types of um, sections of type that, you know, there's, there's a lot of manual formatting. Mm -hmm. Where in the past, yeah. it's all been manual, but it's, but it's heavily stylized. In the beginning of, of creating the nested style, it's usually pretty manual, because what yes. I do normally is I take the first paragraph, the, mm -hmm. the fr like, let's take number eight there and scoop it and, mm -hmm. and the rest, and I format this manually. Yes. And then I create the character styles for mm -hmm. each of the styles I'm doing, mm -hmm. and, and then I remove all the formatting, mm -hmm. and then go into paragraph styles and apply the, um, the nested styles. That, that's exactly the way to do it. And the, the one benefit of being someone who's done all this manually mm -hmm. up to this point is if you're doing a magazine or some other publication where you've already been doing this work manually all this time, you've already got your example styles, yep. you've already got the text formatted, mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably even with the character styles defined. It's just a matter of building the nested style. Now. Cool. So let's go on to the next page here. Now, the next feature I want to show you is something called uh, repeating or looping styles. And to do that, I'm going to pop into a different document because it was exactly this kind of scenario that drove us to add this, this feature in uh, InDesign CS3. What I have here is a movies section from a newspaper in Mexico. This is from uh, the Excelsior newspaper in Mexico City. And you can see that the way that they format their movie listings is fairly common. Most papers do this. So under the name of any given film, they're showing all the theater chains that are playing this and then the individual theaters. And so the name of the theater chain is in this case bold and orange and then the actual theater name is bold and then the movie times are in Roman mm -hmm. okay the Sinopolis uh, Cinepolis that's bad Spanish but that might be close yeah it could be it could be how yeah. would you say that in Italian Cinepolis okay <laughs> fabulous um, that's bold and orange the individual theaters are bold this chain could have dozens mm -hmm. of theaters. And there was a limitation in um, nested styles which made this difficult to do before InDesign CS3. Suppose that we've got like the, the Cinemex chain. Well, that's got dozens of theaters in there. Yep. This film could be playing at dozens of theaters. That's painful manual formatting. Very, very painful manual formatting. And in uh, InDesign CS and CS2, there was a limit of the number of nested style assignments or entries that you could make in that nested mm. styles dialogue. It was like either 32 or 36. And, and so the How problem was... How did they come up with these numbers? Um, I, they're completely arbitrary. I, I think that the, uh, that the engineers... Um, Roll the dice? They, they eat donuts and Twinkies and joke okay. with each other and then say, how about 36? It is, it is either a roll of the dice or, um, or, or something like that. So in this case, the limit was either 32 or 36, one of those two. And you would run out. You could run out of nested mm -hmm. style entries before you ran out of text yeah. to format. So we needed to find a better way to do this. So here's what we did. So I'm, I'm going to zoom into this um, text here, and I'm going to open up the nested style here. So here's the nested style entry right here for this theater chain. So the película cine, that's the name of the chain, that is styled through the first word because all the theater chains are one word names. Mm -hmm. Then it switches to the bold style which goes to the first number digit. Okay, and that's what that's what makes the individual theater name bold. And then it applies no character style to the actual theater times. Okay. So what we need to do is we just need to repeat this style and this nested style. We mm -hmm. need to repeat those two nested style settings. So fortunately, we can hit new nested style, and one of the options here, this was new in CS3, is repeat or loop. So I'm going to choose the repeat command, and I'm going to repeat 
the last two styles. I can choose how many nested styles to repeat. I'm going to choose the last two because that's what I need. Then when I click OK, watch what happens. Boom. Boom. Okay. That's sort of a life-changing thing. Probably some of the people uh, are watching this are now weeping openly. Um, a, you know, it's very sad because of all the time they've been wasting, but then uh, maybe B, hopefully also uh, thrilled uh, to tears of all the time that they're, and uh, time and money they're going to save yeah, like building they can, this style. They can do more in a day. Yes. That is our hope. That is our hope is to mm -hmm. make people more efficient. So um, that is an introduction to nested styles. Um, now our good friend Anne-Marie Concepcion of InDesign Secrets Frame is going to call in and we're going to have a little internet uh, chat with her. She's going to show us a couple of her favorite uh, nested style tips and I think you'll enjoy those as well. We have a special guest with us in the cafe today. Please join us in welcoming Anne-Marie Concepcion from Chicago. Hi, Tim. Welcome to Cafe Hey, Fibonacci. Rufus, how are you? Good. Good. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. We asked Anne-Marie to uh, join us today and show us some of her special nested style tips. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I do know of a few. And I prepared a little file here that I hope you can see on your screens with some actual text that I grabbed from some client files, but I obscured the phone numbers to protect the innocent. So I think one of my favorite nested style tips is what I call uh, apply either. All right. Uh, for example, looking at this list of classified ads, you can see the client has already um, formatted them with a paragraph style called class body for classified's body. And let's assume that we want to make the first part of each classified ad bold. Uh, normally without nested styles, you bold character style to do so, right? I'm going to choose undo because that would be too much work. Instead, we'll let nested styles do it for us. So I'll double click class body. I'll let me scooch it over and make sure the preview's on so you can see the effects of what I do. Go down to drop caps and nested styles. And as Tim has already shown you, all you need to do is click new nested style, select the name of the character style that you want to apply, and then you always have to click this blank area to like make it so. And you can see that it has made the first word. Well, actually, we want everything up to the first comma to be bold. So I'll replace word with a comma. Click the blank area. So there's a comma there. But over here, the comma doesn't occur until the middle of the second sentence. And over here, we have, uh, you know, it goes on too long. Over here, it looks kind of strange because there's a colon and a word with a comma. So what I would prefer is to have the bold be applied up to the colon here, up to the semicolon here, up to the exclamation point there. So what's the solution? You could do it manually by clicking inside this text and uh, entering the special character and nested style here. But that would be a big pain. You could also make duplicate paragraph styles, and I've had some of my clients do this. Class body nested comma, class body nested exclamation point. Oi, too much work. Instead, you can use this cool trick, which is in the field where you enter the stop character, you can enter more than one character. And InDesign doesn't read it as a string. Instead, it reads it um, as an either or. So I could say, I want you to make everything up to the first comma bold, through, including the comma, that's through. But also, in case you happen to see a semicolon, so I've entered a semicolon, stop there, or an exclamation point, or a colon, or an M dash, or seriously, anything you'd like, uh, stop at any one of these points. So I just clicked in the white area to make it so, and you can see here it stopped at the comma, exclamation point, comma, semicolon, and so on. Love that feature. So that's what I call apply either. You can enter a string of characters here. That's a nice right, one because it's under documented. Yeah, I love that one. For my next trick, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I call this one, let me go to the second page, another ext extract from my client's files called um, apply after. Uh, and let's say that in this example, in this part of the classified section, do you see how there are prices here? Let's say that we'd like to make each price into uh, bold and red. So I've already created a character style that will do that. But of course, that would be a lot of work to hunt through each of these thousands of classified ads and apply that. So I'm going to undo. And instead, we'll use nested styles for it. So I go to class body, down to drop caps and nested styles, new nested styles. 
I want to apply the price uh, starting at the dollar bill side. Uh, but there is no starting at. All right, how about after the space preceding the dollar bill sign? There's no after. So how, how are you supposed to do this? Well, Tim might have already shown you already that you can use the none character style to just do nothing. So I like to call the none character style here the skip. Because whenever you use a, a none in your nested styles, that means skip this part. So what we're going to do is just we're going to say, don't do anything in the beginning. And we'll go up to up to the first dollar bill sign. Okay? And then we want to apply the price through the first word. Ta-da! All right, so that is what I call apply after. Use the none style when you want to skip, even if you want to skip the very first sentence. One little extra tweak here is that you see in the second ad, there's actually the guy selling two old Fords, and there's two prices. So now what are you supposed to do? Well, I think that Tim has already shown you the repeat function, but that's, uh, that's how we'll fix this. I need to apply another nested style and set it to repeat the most recent two styles. And now you see that it's applied none. It skipped this first part, applied the style, skipped the second part, applied the style. So if the guy's selling six cars, each one of those prices would have uh, had the character style applied. So love that little tip. And for my last trick, let's see. I've got one more page. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the text. All right, so this is some text that I pulled from a travel website. And let's say that uh, our aim is to format each of these paragraphs so that it looks like this sample on the right that I did with local formatting. You want the first bit bold. You don't want anything to happen to the first sentence after the bold lead-in. And then you want the remaining part of the paragraph all the way up until the end of the paragraph to be italic. Uh, so I think that we already know how to do some of this. This uh, style is travel body. If I double click it, scooch it over, go down to drop caps and nested styles, we already know how to make that first bit bold, right? New nested style, bold through the first colon. Right? These all happen to be colons, but if they weren't, then you would know how to have it stop at an M dash or an semicolon and so on. Then we want to skip the next sentence, and you remember the skip command, that's none through a sentence. And finally, we want to apply the italic style up to the end of the paragraph, or through. So I go to one, and I go choose end of paragraph marker. Wait a minute, wait a minute, there's no end of paragraph marker. Why isn't it there? I don't know. So what are you supposed to do? Well, one thing you can do would be to say, um, Give it like a big hunk of text like sentences, but add a whole bunch of sentences. You could add like five sentences. So if you know that all of your paragraphs are, there's never going to be a paragraph with more than five sentences that you want italic, maybe they're all two and three, then this would work perfectly fine. Uh, actually, Tim, did you know, do you know what the highest number of uh, stop things that you can apply? Like what is the highest number you can enter in this field? Um, Guess. I don't know. I don't think I've ever asked that. <laughs> I love exploring the limits. I like just keep <laughs> entering huge numbers and then wait until InDesign explodes, you know? Uh, so I was experimenting, and the answer is 999 because it won't accept four digits. There you go. That's the trivia for the day. Uh, but actually, you know, in the real world, I very seldom will do this because I don't want to have to go through a 300-page document and count the number of sentences and make sure that I've put in enough numbers. So instead what I do is I just leave it at 1, but for the stop character, I enter something that does not exist anywhere in this story. And that's really easy to do because you could use one of these bottom choices. So let me uh, zoom in here a bit. For example, how often do you enter an automatic page number in the text flow? I don't think very often. You usually use that for folios. Or a section marker, or sometimes you might have an anchored object marker. But either one of these will do fine. If I chose section marker, 
and then clicked in this blank area, you can see that InDesign does not encounter a section marker, so it continues to apply the italic nested style until it hits the end of the paragraph, and then it resets itself. You know, if you think there might be section marker in here, you could enter a character from the keyboard, like I'm pressing Option Shift 8, uh, which makes a degree symbol in, uh, on the Mac. That will work as well. Uh, and that is my last tip, which is apply to the end. Enter a character that doesn't exist as your stop character, and InDesign will continue to apply that character style up to the very end of the paragraph. Well, thank you, Anne-Marie, for yeah. those time-saving tips. Those are great. Thank That's you. That's very cool, yeah. I mean, you know, I think, you know, nested styles are just a time-saver. Yeah, they're fantastic. And, you know, I have more nested style tips. Let me do a little promo here. In my Design Geek newsletter, if you go to designgeek.com, uh, it'll point you toward the newsletter I have, and just do a search there. And also on indesignsecrets.com, which is the blog and podcast that I host with David Blattner, we have a bunch of posts all about Nested Styles tricks. So check those out. And then people should also know that you do a periodic uh, newsletter on InCopy, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Are we talking about InCopy? That's fine. Yeah, InCopy. I do a newsletter called InCopy Flow. Get it? Copy well, I think in copy has style. nested styles too, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Anything, anything uh, text-related, basically, that InDesign has, in copy has. Though normally editors aren't creating nested styles. They could if they want to. Um, but yeah, it definitely has nested styles in in copy as well. Thanks for bringing we that up. We just wanted people to know how to get more of you, Anne Marie. <laughs> you can also hire me. I'm a trainer, all right, and a consultant. So check it out. <laughs> Very good. Thanks a lot, right. Anne Marie. Thank you, Rufus. Appreciate it was great it. talking to you. Thanks, Tim. Bye. Wow. That was great. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. For those of you who would like more of Anne-Marie, uh, check out InDesignSecrets.com. That's the website run by Anne-Marie and David Blattner. If you're an InDesign user, you need to be familiar with that website because yeah. David, Anne-Marie, and other uh, InDesign power users post their conversations, their tips and tricks, yeah, and everything else. they have else a podcast. There. Yes, and they have a great podcast. Yeah. It's just a great uh, resource for all, mm -hmm. all InDesign users, and we really you know, appreciate it. I, I really thinking about a podcast on InDesign, I thought, how boring can that be? But my, <laughs> I, my, 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 my iPod is like full of these podcasts, and I'm having a great time. And they're not boring, is what you And they're saying. not boring. No, and no, no. <laughs> it's, 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 actually, it's actually a tribute to Anne-Marie and David that they can take podcasts yeah, about like software. Talk and about make them InDesign. Yes. Without... Showing anything. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, it is very entertaining and valuable stuff for those of us who are passionate about <laughs> our uh, Creative Suite software, yeah. so, as you and I both are. So, so that was great. Anne Marie showed us a couple of her tricks, tips and tricks uh, for nested styles. Uh, I want to show you a couple more um, that would hopefully enrich your nested style experience. First, I want to go to this one here. I saw this in a magazine the other day, and I thought it was kind of cool. They had several paragraphs that were styled in this way. What I've got here is a couple of paragraphs. The first one gives the name of an MBA team in kind of gold type reversed on top of a black rule in the back. And then that's followed by the name of a player, in this case Brandon Roy, and his name appears and the black rule goes away. Mm -hmm. it, it disappears and then it resumes after his name. It's one bit of trickery to set this up visually. It's another bit of trickery to apply it in one step because this is complicated to set up, but once it's set up, you can apply it very quickly and very easily. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to uh, apply this. I'm going to use uh, the quick apply feature to do this. I'm going to do a search on the, the word uh, player. So um, this is the NBA team slash player style. Quick Boom. apply, how did you do that? Quick apply. Another killer productivity feature in InDesign CS3, command return, brings up the quick apply window. Uh, well, and then you just start typing the name of the style you're looking for and that's right. find it. And your fingers never have to leave the keyboard. This is great because a lot of magazines, especially magazines and newspapers, often have um, 200 styles in their yeah. style palette. It's no fun searching for the style yeah. that you want to apply. And in InDesign CS3, through quick apply, you can also access scripts, mm -hmm. menu commands, very, very valuable for We need to do a whole episode just on quick apply. I think. We, we could. Quick apply tips could. and tricks. We yeah. could. Okay. So that's the first style. We, we applied that NBA team slash player style that did that beautiful little treatment here with the rules. And now we're just going to apply the body text style to the rest of this paragraph. Okay. 
well, how was this done? How did we create this look? How did we knock out that rule? This was done with a character style. We'll show you the character style. It's a style called player. And this style here for this player, Brandon Roy, here's how this is set up. The paragraph style for this paragraph applies a solid rule, a rule above. That's a black rule above across the entire width of the column. And I've got gold reverse text on top of that. But then the question is, how do we knock that out behind the name Brandon Roy? The character style for Brandon Roy here uses a custom underline. InDesign has this nice feature where you can take your underlines and strike throughs mm. and customize Why them. Why don't you turn it off just to show it? Okay. We'll turn off the underline and there, there it go. goes. That's what it would look like if... Without this custom underline. Exactly. So what we did is we created a custom underline and gave it a uh, weight of 12 points so it sits behind the text and I had to uh, vertically offset it by minus 4 points. But that is what knocks out that paragraph rule in back. Okay, So that was all set up in a character style and with one click, as you saw, with one click I can apply that. So now again I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter some new text here. Let's go with uh, NBA team and player and let's go with Florence. There's an NBA team in Florence. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And uh, okay, space. Put your delimiter. And space and we'll Rufus. Rufus. Ah, oh, but Fibonacci. Fibonacci, that's right. Rufus Fibonacci, and then another end space as my delimiter. Boom. Then I hit return, and then Florence got a surprising wow. boost. So without even applying the style, it understands that. And understands that you've that you've switched uh, paragraphs and now switched styles. So um, this is a much much faster way to work, either to apply styles to existing mm -hmm. text or even to enter text uh, from scratch. If you've got Nessa's style set up, it will automatically switch styles for you. So let's look at another trick that I've got going on here. This is what you remarked about in, mm -hmm. in the uh, the first time we saw this example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a paragraph style called cover stories to this table of contents entry. And you'll notice here that I'm using a period as a delimiter here. So for all of these running heads, the section that I want uh, in the running head to be styled in the running head ends or uses a period mm -hmm. as a delimiter. And when I apply this style to it, miraculously, the delimiter disappears. Yep. It goes away. Because I don't want it in my, in my finished product. I, I need it to tell the nested style what to do but I don't want it to mm -hmm. actually print. I, don't, I want it to go away once it's styled. So, well, how does that work? Well, let's look at this nested style here. And notice that I've got, okay, the first nested style um, makes that number green and bold, styles that. That's the cover story's page number character style right there. Then the next nested style applies the running head character style up to the full stop the period, or full stop character. Then I have this other nested style, which I have cleverly named Disappeared, because it makes <laughs> the, uh, the full stop go away. It disappears. And that's just through one full stop character. Well, how, did, how is that set up? How did I make that disappear? Let's look at the... Uh, character style? Let's look at the character style here for, the, for Disappeared. And it's just really a sleazy trick. Frankly, it's but there's yeah, nothing I see wrong. You coming, I see you there's coming. nothing sleazy. There's uh -huh. there, well, there's no trick so sleazy that it's not legitimate to save you time uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and, and money with an InDesign. So let's go look at what this does. Quite simply, all I did to make this period disappear is I gave it a point size of 0.1 point. So it's very, very, very hmm. tiny now. And then, it, well, could you not have applied a white color to it? Well, I did that as well, but I did oh. better than that. I didn't even apply a white color. I gave it a stroke and fill of none. So that if there was a colored background, it wouldn't mm -hmm. show yeah, yeah. at all. So you give it a stroke and fill of none and make it very, very, very small. And the upshot is is that all those little delimiter characters go away. They, obviously, it could be any character you want. It doesn't have to be okay. a full stop. It could be mm -hmm. anything else that is convenient yeah. for you to use as a delimiter. Apropos, okay. what do you think about the end nested style here character? The end nested style here character is fabulous. Do you want to show it just a second how you insert sure. it from the type menu? Sure. Let's go in there. Okay, let's let's suppose that we wanted the uh, the running head to end here after the first Brittany. Yes. <laughs> Which is, you know, I'd like to end it after the first yeah, Brittany. Yeah. Okay. So let's 
go to insert special character other and there's this funky little character here called end nested style here it's for use anytime you need to arbitrarily tell a nested style mm -hmm. okay yep. stop and move on to the next nested style entry so we're going to drop that in there boom and there it is and you can see how it displays when you display invisibles like a little mm -hmm. little slash yep. with with a, with a dot through it okay so yeah you can use that and you you can also using InDesign's keyboard shortcut editor you can apply your own special keyboard mm -hmm. shortcut if you're going to use that a lot but for me i would just rather make the full stops just disappear yep this way so but it's up to you it's certainly your choice work the way that you want to work but that is the special disappearing character cool. trick uh, for character styles so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to change topics a little bit but it's a related topic and what I'm going to do is to show you how to automate the process of formatting two consecutive paragraphs nested styles are great for automating character level formatting mm -hmm. within a paragraph, but what if I have a situation where I've got um, like a caption underneath a photo here in my newspaper, and I've got two separate paragraphs. I've got the name of the photographer, and then I've got the actual caption text. And that's not a hard return. So it's, it's actually two paragraphs. It is a hard return. It actually okay. is a hard return. Yes. It's, it's, it's not a soft return, so it is two separate oh, paragraphs, yes. right? Okay, so what if I could, with one click, format both of those paragraphs at the same time, with one click? Okay, that is what we're going to look at next. How did I do that? Let's, uh, let's zoom back in there and look at how this is, is, is created. Well, actually, I'm gonna, I need to go to a different document because I need to give you the backstory on this feature. This is a music interview article. And it uses every issue. Mm -hmm. The styles appear in the same order. The paragraph styles appear in the, sa in the same order. I've got here an opening paragraph, my introductory paragraph, which I've called interview first drop cap. And then that's followed by interview question and then interview answer. And the whole rest of the article is just question, answer, question, okay. answer. So I'm, I've got a structured order mm -hmm. uh, in, which, in which the styles are applied here. If I'm practicing good document hygiene, Let's go in and edit the introductory paragraph style. You'll see that I've got a next style assigned. And all that means is if I'm entering the text live in InDesign and, I, and I'm using interview first drop cap paragraph mm -hmm. style, when I hit a hard return, then InDesign automatically switches me to the next style, interview question. Yep. Okay? And then if I go to uh, interview question, surprisingly enough, it'll say my next style is interview answer. answer. And then if I go look at interview answer, What's the next style there? It's going to go back to interview question. It's going to just, you know, re repeat and, and loop over and over, right? Yeah. Okay. And that's very useful when you're writing inside of InDesign. Exactly. Exactly. Now, here's another little feature that not enough people are aware of, mm -hmm. and they don't use it. Mm -hmm. But I can select this entire article, all the text in this article, and I hold down my control key on the Mac or right click on Windows, or if I have a two-button Mac mouse, right click on the first style name, okay, the first style in the series, like this. And I get this little pop-up contextual menu, and what I want to do is choose the command apply my style, and then apply the next yep. style. This is going to look in this actual style definition and see if there's a next style defined, and then apply that, and then check to see if that style has a next style mm -hmm. defined, etc. So what will happen is, well, I'll just show you. What happens is I can style my whole article with, with one click, just like that, it's, it's just that fast, okay? So that's, wow. that's great. Okay, now that you know that, you've got to know that in order to understand what's going on in that caption example and the one that I'm going to show you next here. This is exactly the same as the caption example. Here I've got an ad, a display ad, where I've got a product name and a product price and a product description. They all appear uh, in order. Product name, product price, product description. Three separate paragraphs, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use an object style to format all of this text with one mouse click, basically. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the uh, price frames here, like that. I'm going to go to an object style called prices, and watch what happens. With one click, 
Boom. Separate styles applied to three separate paragraphs. That stuff is styled. Now, let's open up the uh, object style and see how this is done. Notice, and this is something that not very many people take advantage of in their, in their object styles. Notice that in your object styles, you can apply a paragraph style to mm -hmm. text. So what I did there for my um, object style for these little text frames, for this uh, advertising text, I have a paragraph style called product name. That product name paragraph style has a next style assignment of product price. Product price is a next style assignment of uh, product description. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I assign a paragraph style via an object style and notice I check this apply next style mm -hmm. checkbox, it does the same thing that we did earlier with the contextual menu. Yep. It enables me to apply to format multiple paragraphs with one click mm -hmm. via an object style. So between nested styles, which you've seen for applying character level styling within a paragraph, and then this object style uh, feature, apply next, you can rapidly format text, instantly format text in quite a number of layout situations. These two features could save you so much time if you're working in, in, a, in a magazine environment or some mm -hmm. other environment where you're de dealing with a heavily stylized type. Mm -hmm. What's been your experience been out in the real world with your training once people start to uh, use these features and understand them? Well, it's all a matter of organization, really, mm -hmm. like really getting, like, what, what did you call it? Document hygiene? Yeah, you're practicing yeah. good document hygiene. I yes. love that. Um, so it's, it's a matter of getting organized and as we'll also see in other episodes, like putting styles and uh, using object styles, paragraph styles, character styles, table styles, actually makes your document very clean and allows other people to work with it faster and for yourself to work faster with it in, in future. And uh, we've seen many examples of, uh, of, uh, of lists, but um, I used, I used uh, um, object styles and um, nested styles a lot also for book paragraphs, just mm -hmm. for textbooks mm -hmm. where we have maybe the, the chapter name, the first paragraph of the chapter without the indent, and then the second paragraph and all others with a five millimeter indent. And it's so cool to go through all the chapters and just go click, 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 book formatted. So what we're going to do, just in case some of this went past you too quickly, we're going to take the examples that we used in today's episode mm -hmm. and make them available to you at the URL that you see below. It's going to take you to Adobe mm -hmm. Share, and you're going to be able to download, probably, I think we'll, we'll put this all in a zip archive, yeah. and what we'll do is we'll save these as InDesign snippets, mm -hmm. and so you'll just be able to drag and drop these snippets into your InDesign document, mm -hmm. and it will automatically document, uh, populate your style palettes. Your, your style palettes with yeah. the, the character styles, paragraph styles, and object yes. styles. So you could see how these examples mm -hmm. were created. Then you can modify them and, and or just use them to, lo uh, mm -hmm. to learn how to use this feature. And then why do don't you copy own. just one of these text boxes into a new document, just to show how the uh, the styles palette populate with all the styles? Okay. So here's my new document. Here, let's uh, grab one of these objects which was styled with that object style. Let's just drag it into this new document, and then there you'll see that the uh, prices object style appeared, as did our product description, uh, price, and product name. So that's what you'll be able mm -hmm. to do. We're going to give you these examples uh, in the form of InDesign snippets. You can drag and drop them into your documents, uh, take them apart, play with them, and make them in your own. But most importantly, we want you to, to learn this feature and take advantage of it because it's a great feature. It'll save you mm -hmm. time. It'll save you money. And um, uh, thanks, for, thanks for joining yep. us on this episode of Cafe Fibonacci. See you next time. Thank you. Ciao.